back now on Newsy special coverage. Actually, Scripps News now. We've changed yeah. our name. Scripps News special coverage of it's a good um, catch. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, this is the fourth potential indictment mm -hmm. of former President Donald John Trump. Uh, we know that a 10 count indictment came down in Fulton County, Georgia. Mm -hmm. It's been anticipated for a year plus at this point, and now. We know an indictment was passed. We don't know what's in it. There are so many factors here, which is why we're being cautious with our language. We, there are so many things that we don't know about what all this uh, this document says. Um, but we do know that this is uh, something that we've we've already been waiting on mm -hmm. for at least the last hour. Or so it's been an all day sort of affair. Something that we thought was going to go into to tomorrow really kind of sped up a bit today. Maybe so. the whole week. Uh, <laughs> right. Our colleague Del Walters is out on the scene right now, right outside that courthouse. And Del, we were told, you know, this might be until the 18th. And even then, it's not a sure thing. You've been out there today. It seems things have calmed down a bit. But can you just give us a sense of today? Yes, today it was, I, I hate to use the phrase normal because nothing's normal anymore. But there were no protests. There were no people gathered out here other than the typical people who come to heckle uh, those of us who do what we do. Um, the courthouse has been secure. There weren't any uh, perceived uh, reports of any threats on members or staff that we know of. One of the things that they indicated early on is that there was security seen and also security unseen. So in terms of setting the table for what happened today, everything went off without a hitch because we watched on live television as the clerk of court came up. The judge then said there are 10 counts in this indictment. That indictment was handed to the clerk. She was then escorted. And now we await the unsealing of the true bill or the indictment. We do know now that the former president, Donald Trump, believes mm -hmm. that he was indicted because he has posted just moments ago on True Social. And Avajoy reads that little print much better than I did. But the bottom it, line is he says this is... It, it's quite long, but he said this is a uh, political interference, right. election interference once again. He said they could have brought this two and a half years ago, yet they chose to do this for election interference reasons in the middle of President Trump's successful campaign. So this is coming from his campaign. I was saying earlier today, just a few moments ago, that we hadn't heard anything right. from them. And, and we were usually... checking to see if we had heard from other people that we believe may be uh, indicted in this case as well. And the people on Capitol Hill, even though they are not there, are extremely quiet tonight, which is unusual because if you think about Florida, if you think about Manhattan, if you think about January 6th, immediately after those indictments were unsealed, we heard from, from people, people saying this is a witch hunt. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have mm -hmm. IV. If someone's talking to me, just let me know. No. Um, but that's what we, uh, well, we know right now, which is that the former president himself believes that he has been indicted. We do or have uh, on to the it. line with us as well, uh, constitutional attorney okay. Andrew Lieb. And, and Andrew, again, it seems that the former president believes he's indicted. We do not have that on paper just yet, and we don't want to, you know, get ahead of ourselves here. But in, in this statement that Abajoy was reading, I'm, it, it is really, really lengthy. <laughs> um, you, you have to scroll to get through it. But up top, he makes sure to point out that Fonnie Willis is a Democrat, just like Letitia James in New York, like Alvin Bragg in New York. And, and he says this, quote, or at least his team says this, quote, combined with the intentionally slow-walked investigations by the Biden-Smith goon squads and the false charges in New York, the timing of this latest coordinated st strike by a biased prosecutor in an overwhelmingly democratic jurisdiction not only betrays the trust of the American people, but also exposes true motivation driving their fabricated accusations. You know, this case did take a while. We are entering 2024 season, and I believe these prosecutors have been in touch with those in Washington, D.C. Is that typical, or is there some sort of collusion that they're pointing at there? Is You know, a lot of us don't know how this really works. Chance, I don't know that we're hearing any evidence of collusion whatsoever. There's allegations here, there, and everywhere. But at the end of the day, Jack Smith is not a Democrat talking about the indictments. And that's from um, the special counsel. And that's two indictments in D.C. and Florida. But setting that all aside, the grand jury isn't Democrats. The grand jury is all people, Republicans, Democrats alike. It's not like a prosecutor, whether it's Jack Smith or we go over to Alvin Bragg or we go to Fonnie Willis right here gets to decide and do whatever they want. 
what they do is they go before a grand jury and they present evidence to the grand jury and the grand jury decides whether there's reasonable suspicion and returns an indictment of probable cause. And we have a system here. And I think the most troubling thing, Chance and Christian, about this entire line of thinking is that a lot of people say, well, I'm for Trump, I'm for Trump. But at the end of the day, and I'm fine with being for Trump, at the end of the day, there's three branches of our government. And if you think that the judiciary part of the government doesn't count, you're being un-American. We have to believe in the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary. And this is the judicial process. He's innocent until proven guilty. Let's let it all play out, Chance and Christian. Yeah. Andrew, I want to uh, jump in here because I know that you um, are a constitutional law expert. And one of the things from um, uh, former President Trump's team that he put out today, something that kind of um, um, uh, piqued my interest uh, was, uh, this is the statement here, they're taking away President Trump's First Amendment right to free speech and the right to challenge a rigged and stolen election that the Democrats do all the time. Thinking about the Constitution and thinking about what kind of message that the Trump team is sending out, do you feel like this is uh, an effective way to go about you know, pleading the former president's case? I mean, what is it about this that really piques your interest? Well, Christian, I have to ask you back, and I'm just rhetorically asking this, but are we pleading the president's case for getting donors and running for election? Or are we pleading the president's case in order to get these cases dismissed? The indictment in New York, the indictment in Florida, the indictment in D.C. And this indictment, we're seeing that there's 10 indictments. We don't know that Donald Trump's one of them. But the 10 indictments that we saw when we saw a picture of the indictment handed up to Judge McBurney, and we saw that. So to answer your question, Christian, it's a terrible strategy when it comes to court. It's a laughable strategy. The First Amendment has limits. We always knew it had limits. You could go just to Scalia recently. I know he's deceased, but one of the best and most famous Republican jurists of our time talking about the limits of the First Amendment. The First Amendment has limits when you're doing conspiracy. Think about it like this. How could we ever have a conspiracy, which means two people discussing something about a crime, if discussing was protected by the First Amendment? Look at it like this. How could a mob boss be responsible for a murder when he tells someone to murder them if he's just saying he orders the murder? It's a ridiculous, preposterous concept. That the First Amendment does not have limits. It has limits when you're in the judicial system. It has limits when we do protective orders. And for the most simple answer to your question, Christian, there, you can't yell fire in a crowded building, but it plays Lost tremendously well to Trump's base. It helps him raise money. It politically makes people that don't study the law say, wow, First Amendment. So it's a great political tactic, a terrible courtroom tactic. And we have to see if back. Donald Trump's ever going to play courtroom or continue just to try and win president and hope that he gets all sorts of pardons along the way. So, Doug Burns, you have worked in a lot of federal cases. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater, but... Can an American president yell rigged after an election? That's what Donald Trump is saying. Hey, I have this right. Let me read part of this new statement that came out and get your reaction to it. Quote, these activities by Democrat leaders constitute a grave threat to American democracy and are direct attempts to deprive the American people of the rightful choice to cast their vote for president. Call it election interference or election manipulation. It is a dangerous effort by the ruling class to suppress the choice of the people. It is un-American and wrong. Now, we, we don't have any indication and they have not provided evidence and all their cases got thrown out of court that there was this widespread fraud. But again, he's saying that he believed this. I was under the advice of counsel. John Eastman was telling me to do this. Uh, does that hold any legal water? Well, what happened here, though, is they named Eastman and Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell and others as unindicted co-conspirators. So that's going to eviscerate uh, to a great extent, the advice of counsel defense, because normally you'd say, the lawyer told me A, B, and C, and the government here comes back and says, well, the lawyer is an unindicted co-conspirator who engaged in criminal conduct. The other part of that is that if it's some type of crime fraud exception, <clears throat> then the attorney-client privilege can also be breached, which is usually important for the prosecutors. But I'm very glad that my colleague broke this out into political discussion about the case and the legal discussion, because that's what makes it so confusing. So the Trump side comes right out. It's a witch hunt. My First Amendment rights 
And as my colleague says, people just latch on to that First Amendment. Of course, the First Amendment is a continuum. Not all speech is protected, obviously. Inciting, ri inciting riots, um, obscenity, other things. So this case will be won or lost on the theory for the state you, that you know what, they Doug, went way I wanna, too far. I want to go more on that continuum when we come back, including with our political director, Andrew Rafferty. He's going to be here with us. So we're going to get into politics and legalities right after this.